decision. Here is our tale of the tape brought to you by OnlyFans. See this flyweight bout here. 26 versus 28, 5, 6 against 5, 7 in the height. Two inch reach advantage for Gutierrez. And let's take it inside to Wayne and get our official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by OnlyFans is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury FC Flyway Division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This freestyle fighter stands 5 feet 7 inches tall and he weighed in at 124 pounds. Fighting out of Denver, Colorado. Today he makes his professional debut. Here is Juan Rosales. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This mixed martial artist stands 5 feet 6 inches tall, and he weighed in officially at 126.4 pounds. Fighting out of San Antonio, Texas, today he looks for his first win as a pro. This is El Cañonero, Brandon Gutierrez. Your referee in charge, Mark Colloy. All right, our first pro prelim underway. Rosales going to be in the blue, Gutierrez in the red gloves. Here are the heavy strikes already from these gentlemen. Man, Rosales could not wait for this fight to start. Looking at him before the before the you know bell rang, he was just just waiting to let go. Yeah, much like your your amateur debut. You know, the difference is, is that, you know, at, after you've been an amateur, you're making your pro debut, you're ready to make your mark on the MMA world uh, as a pro. And, you know, we glamorize those visions in our head where we come out and we do a 360 spinning kick to the face and it's over in 10 seconds and we do a backflip off the cage and <laughs> a lot of times it doesn't work out that way. <laughs> You like to have those envisionments and those game plans, but almost certainly once you get in there and start getting going, it never goes the way you envisioned. But it's good to have those mental reps, per se. You put yourself in that position mentally so many times, it almost feels comfortable when you're in there physically. We've yeah. seen a lot of open stance fights tonight. Like almost all of them in Southpaw versus Ortho or, or stance changing fighters. Yeah, you got to wonder if Rich and Eric have some kind of bet or something that he can't. Make an all orthodox versus southpaw fighter card or something. Just as a note, this is our first pro fight of the afternoon. All of these pro fights are going to be five minute oh. rounds now. As far as our amateurs, they were three minute rounds, so a little bit more length, a little bit more time with which to work with for these professional fighters. It's all us going to the body, man. Beautiful open side kick, then three minute jab low. Open side high kick. And Rosales having enough of this stand-up game. Wanting to get this fight to the ground. Yeah, hits a nice single leg there to get the fight down to that mat. Yeah, undoubtedly Rosales knows that that Gutierrez lost his first mat or first fight by armbar. And so you you know you make assumptions about what their jujitsu is or, or what their capabilities are based off of that, and you know that's not always the case. No. See Gutierrez working for that high guard. You know, it's really cold in this arena, and I was just having a conversation with some guys who train in the heat, like in like no AC, and they're like. You know, in your experience, do you think it's beneficial? I'm like, maybe early to build some toughness. I was like, but most arenas are ice cold. So you got to get used to fighting kind of in a cold setting. So now, invest in a decent AC system, gym owners. Yeah. I I'm going to give you our gym owner's number. <laughs> Albert Hughes, do you hear this? <laughs> when you have cold venues like this, it does. It really makes you strategize the warm-up process, when you hit mitts, when you're wrestling. You don't want to get too warm too early, then have too much time to get cold. You're back there freezing, shivering, soaking wet. So there's kind of a science to it behind the scenes here for these fighters. Oh, for sure. And I'm just looking at these guys, and they're both dry, right. especially with Rosales on top. 
and that makes for a lot easier control time and, and pins and underhooks. Yeah, those submissions very early on. We've got a minute and a half left here in the first round. Those submissions are going to be more likely to happen here in this round. As oh, yeah. the fight continues to go, they'll get a little bit greasier. They'll get a little bit sweatier. And those will be a, a little less per percentage to be landed. Yeah, you saw Gutierrez trying to feed that arm through to maybe set up that triangle. Or maybe even that straight arm lock from the bottom. Which is a beautiful technique if anybody knows how to do it. Goes Rosales here trying this topside guillotine. You do not need both hands to finish that, but Terrace doing a good job of bucking out of it. Yeah, you know, it absolutely can be done. You know, I give a big speech all the time about, you know, attacking out of position. You know, using top half, not the best guillotine spot, not the worst. I'm sure Mike's got a little smirk. Mike's the only guy I've ever met in my entire life who can submit you from literally anywhere. <laughs> Like I was on your back. How'd you ankle lock? All of my, I don't know what he's talking about. All of my principles are broken when he is in class with us, and I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> yeah, they're like, uh, you know, we go, I go train with Alex, and they're like, we're going to body lock and ride this dude. And I'm like, yes, do it. Body lock me. <laughs> Give me those elbows. <laughs> yeah, I learned quick. Ten seconds left here. Ooh, left hand landed there from Gutierrez. Gutierrez saw it down to one second, wanted to get one more punch in. <laughs> Didn't care if it landed or not, wanted to hit somewhere. Very close first round, though. Yeah, we had, we had an exceptional night of amateur fights, but like just now watching the first pro fight, you can kind of see the difference. They're all proficient everywhere. They're all pretty athletic. Yeah, you can see here in the replay, we saw both guys landed some body shots. You saw uh, Rosales land that kick there, and then Gutierrez was a little more aware of it. Gutierrez landed a few of his own. He was on the bottom here, but not much damage done by Rosales. A very, very close round. Here was that that uh, one-arm guillotine set up. Gutierrez able to buck out of it. Both guys very relaxed, Alex. Both guys doing a good job. Really difficult first round to call. Yeah, the very close there. The Terrace looking like the fresher fighter coming out here for round two. Ooh, big left hand by Gutierrez. Yeah, he's landed a couple of those now that's got the attention of Rosales. Now, that one hurt Rosales because he wanted to retreat out of there pretty quick to recover. He recovered very, very quickly. Looks like he's back to it now. Yeah, Gutierrez's best work has been coming forward, just being the aggressor. Yeah, and you mentioned that a while ago, Alex. These guys are both still not sweating. It's weird. That could have something to do with the fact that they're 125 pounds and you know, don't run out of gas until five it's, rounds it, in. It really but, is wild. When I said yeah. last round, a minute and a half left, and they're still not sweating, I was like, man, this is pretty wild. But, yeah, I'd be a absolute sweaty mess by now inside there. Just the lights alone, then all the pressure, the nerves, everything, and then this guy trying to punch me in the face. Yeah, I'm sweating. <laughs> My shirt is soaking wet right now, and I'm just oh, over here talking. That's it, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm not the only one. You're not the only one. <laughs> Ooh, good body kick there from Rosales. Yeah, Gutierrez starting to find his range here with his punches. Rosales finding his range with his kicks. Ooh, very close miss there. A very close miss with that knee. You know, figuring out why Gutierrez was having the most success coming forward. It's because he was crowding up Rosales. And Rosales was not able to hit those big power side kicks. But as Gutierrez kind of bounced out of range, that allowed Rosales to use his, his length and his techniques. Now it looks like Rosales wants to use those kicks kind of as his jab. They kind of keep the distance there. And you're right, Alex, moving forward. And you, know, you got to be careful with those takedowns. He was ready for the takedown, threw up a knee, it just missed. It's a cool little under the head wrist pin. Yeah, it's kind of like a gift wrap, far side gift wrap, but. It's like, when Ameri it's like when white belts go for Americanas. They yeah. do it in their head by mistake. <laughs> exactly what was going through my head. An actual good way to use it to pin the arm. That's actually something I may try. That was cool. So last time Rosales went for this 
Gutierrez was able to get out. Yeah, he was able to get out and make his way back to the feet. Yeah, Rosales got a little too far over his head, got his weight a little too far forward, and got bucked off there. Gutierrez back up to his feet now. Good knee on the break there. Rosales looking for the back for a moment, but decides to break with a heavy knee. Takes a shot again. Nice single leg, dumps him. Yeah, good wrestling here from Juan Rosales. Good control. It's whenever he transitions to try some missions, that's whenever Gutierrez is getting out. Yeah, great scramble ability there from Gutierrez. Just moving, able to get back to his feet, fighting the hands and looking to turn back inside. Show a little elbow. He's always thought about throwing there. Brandon Gutierrez with some good counter strikes right there. Ooh, big body kick there from Rosales. Ooh, that one had a little more thud. Yeah. And those are the deeper. ones that damage a little bit more. If you hear it slap, not as much damage. Those thuds are the ones that you feel on the other side of your body. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the organs taking all of the force there. Big old mouse. Big old mouse on the right eyebrow. Yeah, on the forehead here. Oh, here is there. It was right after a, another big takedown there from Rosales, the third big dump that he's got, another takedown on top. See Gutierrez not so quick to get back to his feet this time around. It's a good head and arm choke. Looking to step over is Rosales. It's a good head and arm choke. Yeah, Gutierrez made a mistake there. Yep. Oh, Rosales got that over to the mat. He could, if he can flatten him, he can finish it. If not, he can take the back. Yeah, Giving the back up in the process. It was a good secondary. He needs to go double underhooks here. This is also where that power half comes in really well. The man, he didn't need any extra tips there. Rosales, he had his, he had his routing down there. And Rosales with a very good ground game. He is making some technical mistakes here, but overall, and he's kind of having his way on the ground with Brandon Gutierrez. Gutierrez is able to stand oh, up no. a lot. Oh, this is under the chin. Might be under the chin That's here. very close. fighting. He's got to go palm to palm with Rosales. Trying to reload that figure yeah. four. Gutierrez has done a good job cutting an angle and hand fighting. He needed to right there. You know, Alex, just as of note, you don't really see a whole lot of fighters transition to that palm to palm. I'd love to see that more. So, man, in my guy Sean's last fight in the back, the last thing we did was a figure four to a palm to palm to a figure four, and he pulled that palm to palm off in Beautiful. this fight. Short time here. That's good scramble do there from both guys. And that palm to palm just so effective when the guy fights the top hand starts ripping that off. You just slide right yeah. into the palm I mean, to palm, and it just makes it even tighter. Let's look at some of these highlights here. Siding round there. Ooh, big left hand at the beginning there for Gutierrez. But yeah, body kick landing by Rosales. At the same time, Gutierrez was landing that left hand. And then again, it went to the mat. That's probably the culprit from that big yeah, mouse right say, there, yeah, Alex. An elbow. And then good wrestling here from Rosales again. Good control. Ooh, nice body, body kick. kick there. Those, that's the one that was the big thud. And then we saw again another takedown here, and he and Rosales almost finished this fight. If he had a little more time, or if he'd have got to the back a little earlier, he might have. But that's that position, that lever hand. You cannot get it down uh, and on their forehead. It has got to be tucked back behind their head. And until you can get it there, you have to do that gable grip. There's no other way to secure that choke, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're about to head into our third round here. I don't know who Rosales' coach is, but I like him. He was getting Rosales fired up in the corner. It was cool. Looks like Gutierrez' his coach did the same thing. He comes out <laughs> running across the cage, looking to land a heavy left hand. Man. What does Gutierrez need to do here, Michael, to get this fight going his way? Well, he's got to keep it on the feet, first of all. And then second of all, he has got to get, stay in the pocket. He has got to put those punches in bunches. He's got to be careful not to throw so many punches like, just like that. He's got to be aware of that takedown. He's got to sprawl. He needs to kill the spirit of Rosales here in the third round. Yeah, I think pressuring without clinching up is, is the key for him. He's not going to get those kicks, and he'll have a really good chance to the take sense if he's the one coming forward. Yeah, and he's a damage here. There you go. A few punches from this position. Yeah, he does not need to let him turn the corner. He needs to stand up. 
This is a good position to do that switch, Alex. Well, not now. Now, rain some punches. Yeah, Gutierrez in a dominating position right now, looking to score some big strikes. Yeah, I think Gutierrez made a mistake there, kind of rolling to his back without that no bottom hooks. hook. Yeah. He's got the wrist right, though. That's kind of what kept him tethered. See that two-on-one right there. Rosales trying to gain control of the choking arm. Looks like he's trying to slide it underneath the chin. Is Gutierrez. Yeah, Gutierrez is again making a mistake here, I think. Underneath those hooks. No hooks. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have like a full loop of connection on the upper half. Finds himself being fully mounted now. What a changing of the tides here. Goes from being on the back trying to get the rear naked choke to now he's being fully mounted. Nice Using reversal. the cage though as a pretty crafty Absolutely. little reversal there. Yeah, Gutierrez needs to st sit back and let him stand up. And now he has got to turn it on here. Nice body kick there from Rosales. Another one. Oh, man. Yeah, going Gutierrez. to the well again. Gutierrez is eating those well, though. I mean, he's not really even winced much. I mean, he's probably eating 10, 12 of those big open side kicks. Yeah, the kicks are, are landing well, Alex, but they're stopping at the body. He's not kicking through his right. body, so I think he's able to just take those. Oh, here we go. There we go about breaking the spirit of Rosales. Stand and trade, land a few, and don't let him have that takedown. Two minutes to go in our third and final round of this fight. Rosales able to get in on another takedown here. Oh, man, I think Gutierrez kind of gave that up. Yeah, I, I, know, I know it's tough, and this is a dog fight. You just can't accept bottom position. No. I feel you. I feel you, Gutierrez. I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> you see a lot of guys at this time of the fight where the takedown happens. It's like they kind of settle and accept the takedown and then go, okay, now I got to get out. Yeah. You want to, as soon as the back touches the mat, you got to be trying to get up. And it looks like he just didn't quite have and the necessary of, energy. And in terms of calories burnt, it's actually easier to like, you know, really, really work off of contact and not let him settle and then try to work, work your way out of a way like flatter position. Back to that familiar position from earlier where he was using that kind of a white belt Americana grip <laughs> you guys were talking about, but he used it there again, trying to set this arm triangle up. And Rosales, again, his wrestling is really good. He's making some technical mistakes during his transitions for his submissions, but, I mean, overall, he's dominating the ground game. Yeah, he sure has. And with just a minute left here in the fight, Rosales on the back of Gutierrez now switches to the mount with some elbows. Just in total control right now. Dan, I'll tell you, as many fights as we've called in this 125 division, both of these guys have some work to do to, to, to make some noise in that 125 division. This is a good fight for each other. They're a good matchup, but, man, there are some monsters in this Fury 125 division. Yeah. About 30 seconds left. Oh, he's this. just squeezing the face yeah. of Gutierrez. I think he could have finished that if he would have kept going with it. Some, some elbows being landed here from Rosales. Gutierrez turning the back once more, giving the back up to get away from the strikes. I think Rosales yeah. content to just continue to hammer to the end of the fight Ooh. here. That's how you get cauliflower here, by the way. Ten seconds left. Oh, oh. oh it's a straight down on bar. He's belly down. Yeah. There's enough time, though. Yeah. Plus, I don't think he's got the thumb facing down in this position. So, <laughs> he's None like, I'm not giving it up. <laughs> or is he asleep there? No, I need time. <laughs> Nonetheless, a good way to end the fight for Rosales there on a submission attempt after a pretty a dominating performance. The grappling man, it just came down to it, Michael, the grappling. He was able to get the takedowns, able to land some heavy ground of pounds, some elbows there in the later round. Impressive performance there. Yeah, I think it's a 29-28 fight uh, for uh, Rosales. I think Terrace might have won the second round, but, I mean, it was very, very close. But you saw See. this was kind of the... the, the this is the way the entire fight went. As Gutierrez would start to land punches, Rosales would take a few and he would get tired of it. He would get this to the mat. And then as soon as he did, it was kind of the same way. He would, he would dominate him in the wrestling, in the sense of wrestling. But whenever he had those transitions, Gutierrez a lot of times was able to get out. He was able to survive those submission attempts. But that's where Gutierrez was the most successful at range. 
whenever he had uh, Rosales up against the cage, but he just wasn't able to stop those takedowns. And then here, I think he, I think Rosales could have finished that if he kept squeezing that, Alex. Yeah, yeah, that was a, it was a, it was a fun fight. I do believe Rosales was kind of in control. You know, even even on the feet, he had those big open side kicks. And he definitely, like you're saying, Mike, did some really good work on the ground. Shouldn't be long here. We'll have a referee's decision. See what they have to say about this one. Okay, inside the way now. Let's make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges' scorecards for your decision. Brought to you by Space City Collective. All three judges score the fight 30 to 27, declaring a winner by unanimous decision. Juan Rosales. Oh, you on your own.